Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is making waves. People are very upset about some of the comments that he's recently made regarding Israel. So Israel is a hot button topic, as many of you know. Some of you may be very much in support of Israel and others might feel like Israel is a country that has sort of um, been the impetus of marching us into many conflicts in the Middle East in order to keep Israel safe and uh, has continued to be the reason why we've destabilized much of the Middle East in order to keep other countries from rising up and threatening Israel. Uh, many people believe that there's too much foreign policy money spent on Israel. So there's a lot of beef about the United States seemingly um, very brotherly, you know, uh, relationship with Israel, the coziness of that relationship. You've got every politician in Congress pretty much says, I stand with Israel, almost as if Israel is an extension of the United States. So a lot of people have an issue with this. So um, RFK Jr. recently got into a bit of this uh, hot water and is now standing firm with Israel, and this is upsetting some people. So let's go over some of the drama. So first of all, what happened, this started um, on the 27th of May when he tweeted out this about Roger Waters. Roger, you are the global hero Orwell had in mind when he said, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. The high priests of the totalitarian orthodoxies are trying to silence you with censorship, gaslighting, and defamation. Please keep speaking truth to power. So he tweets this out. Now, Roger Waters is often in hot water because he talks about Israel. He calls out the military-industrial complex. Uh, all kinds of authoritarian ideas, and Roger Waters speaks out about that, about that. So the issue then happened when RFK Jr. deleted this tweet. So he tweets this out, and then he deletes the tweet. He then comes out with an explanation when people are like, why did you delete the tweet? And he comes out and he says this, in my remarks about Roger Waters, I was referring to his dissent on COVID and the war in Ukraine. I've only recently learned about some of his other views, which I do not share. I support Israel's right to exist within secure borders, and I also support the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people. So he's also deleted this tweet. <laughs> so he, he's having his own internal battle, it seems like. Now, our friend uh, Pasta from the Convo Couch had a chance to actually ask RFK Jr. a question. Um, he did this on the 1st of June. Here's him asking about this and RFK Jr.'s response. <laughs> Mr. Kenny, um, a lot of people are confused about the tweet storm. I call it the tweet heard around the world. A couple of tweets were put up in support of Roger Waters and then taken down. Do you want to give us a little explanation of why they were taken down and also your stance on Israel and Palestine? Uh, I, I, I tweeted that. Um, I made the tweet applauding Roger Waters' courage in opposing the COVID mandates and the um, and the Ukraine war. I did not. I was unaware of his position on Israel, and when I learned that, I, I immediately took it down. My position of Israel is that I support Israel. I support my family has a long relationship with Israel. I support its right to exist and its right to protect its security. And the Palestinians? And, and a, a humane outcome and a recognition, ultimately, of the aspirations of the Palestinian people is important for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. What do you make of Okay, so I'm not sure which order. When did we, do we know when he deleted this other tweet, the second tweet? Was that before Pasta asked him this question or after? I'm not 100% certain which one. So, um, you know, because his answer in the video is identical to the tweet. So why would he then delete the tweet? It makes me think he deleted the tweet after Pasta asked him that question. Maybe he thought about it. Maybe people will, were telling him, you know, Roger Waters gets smeared a lot for his viewpoint. He's often called an anti-Semite, but um, he's not. You know, he just calls out what the Israel, the, the illegal occupation of Israel, of the Palestinian people. And so maybe that's why he deleted it, because he was like, well, it's not really anti-Semitic. It's just so, so there's, you know, some fumbling going around there when it comes to his stance on Israel. And everybody really wants to know this, because some people will say, um, you know, a lot of people want people to have, politicians to have a very strong support for Israel. Obviously, there's a big push for this. Otherwise, politicians wouldn't be doing it all the time. But they do, because if they don't, they're going to get it. 
I mean, the, the, Israel, the Israel lobby will come after you as a candidate, the, privately, personally. They don't even need to get involved with your opponent's campaign. They just don't like you, and they will, they will come after you if they don't feel like you are in support of them. They will take you down. They'll spend boatloads of cash to ensure that you just your, your campaign fails. So a candidate almost has to support Israel— has to, but you know, then again, you look at you look at Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders did not feel the need to come out and coddle in this way that R.F. Kennedy Jr. is. Bernie Sanders was like, "What they're doing to the Palestinian people is wrong," and that's that. Now, maybe Bernie Sanders gets away with that a little bit more because he's Jewish. I don't know. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not; he's Catholic. So maybe, maybe Bernie feels like he can say these things, and R.F.K. feels like he has to be much more measured in the things that he says. He has to come out more blatantly in support of Israel. And if you remember. During COVID, he was really under fire for some comments he made at a speech when he was talking about the surveillance state, and he mentioned that Anne Frank even, you know, was able to hide from the surveillance state. So then people were like, how dare he compare anti-vaxxers with Anne Frank in the Holocaust? And he wasn't. He was just saying the surveillance state, now you can't hide. And people were able to hide at one point, and now they cannot. He wasn't actually comparing to the Holocaust. But of course, that got blown way out of proportion. It got, it was blasted everywhere. And so maybe he feels like he has to show really strong support for Israel because he's often smeared as anti-Semitic in his own past for saying certain things. So over the weekend now, um, he has been, he was out there with uh, Israel celebrating their 75th year, their 70. Five years of as as a country anniversary. They had a parade in New York, and he was out there with Rabbi Shmum, uh, Shmuley. He says, "So grateful that my friend and great friend of Israel, Robert Kennedy Jr., marched with me today with an Israeli flag at the Celebrate Israel 75 parade on Fifth Avenue in New York City." And here's actually a video of those two uh, together. No, 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 no. One, two, three. I want to thank our dear friend Bobby Kennedy, phenomenal friend of Israel and the Jewish community, for joining us to celebrate Israel Parade on Israel's 75th birthday. Bobby, this crowd loves you. God bless Israel. I'm going to be a champion for Israel as president. And God bless you. And, and did you see how much they have, the love they've shown you, your family's legacy, your family's a contribution to America, and the friendship between Israel and the United States. And God bless you, Bobby. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby. Okay, so he's obviously showing a lot of support for Israel. This is obviously upsetting people who would rather have a more measured and nuanced approach to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, somebody who maybe um, you know, just has a more nuanced. Because when people see this, they think, great, we're just going to be sending, again, endless cash to Israel to allow them to continue their human rights abuses against the Palestinians, to um, you know continue... Uh, doing, being at their behest, doing all of this meddling in the Middle East in order to keep them safe and just keeping us in endless wars and, uh, you know, when is this going to end? And we, we, it can't end when we just have candidates continuing over and over to pander to Israel. That's, you know, Israel's not America, right? It's a separate country. Uh, Anya Parampil, she actually tweeted out something really great. Um, she said, once again, you know, Anya always has many great things to say. And she says here, two things I know are true. One, it's it's impossible to run a national campaign in this country without pandering to Zionism. I'm not sure if I agree with that because I don't think Bernie Sanders did. He did a pretty good job. Anyone genuinely committed to U.S. sovereignty, individual liberties and peace will soon be forced to Israel as the greatest to see Israel as the greatest obstacle to these ideals on Earth. Um, certainly. There's a lot of truth to that, that the United States has been very much acting as the henchman around the world, you know, in the Middle East in particular for Israel. And that is a big obstacle to what many of us would like to see in this country. Uh, but I do want to point this out. So, you know, like, look, when it comes to RFK Jr., I, I've been a big supporter of his campaign. I don't I don't disagree with his statements on Israel, but I don't I think that. It's the stuff that's not said that's the question. You can say, I support Israel, I support their right to exist, and I support them having secure borders. Yeah, okay, I can agree with that. I actually think that for any nation, right? I, I would say that about Canada. I, I agree with Canada's right to exist and their right to have secure borders. <laughs> okay, I agree 
Francis' right to exist and Francis' right to have secure borders. I agree with that for the United States. A lot of people in this country want that for the United States. I agree with that. It's the stuff that's not said. So that's the big question. You know, when, when he's then asked about Palestine, he says, I, you know, I, I do, uh, I, I support their right to, uh, the, the, I support their legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people. My answer would be, I support Palestinians' right to exist and their right to secure borders. That, to me, would be the right answer. It's both. Both nations have the right to exist with the right to have secure borders. Israel keeps encroaching on Palestine's borders and continues to grow into their territory and leaving the Palestinian feeling constantly under assault. And so, of course, they fight back because anybody would. And, you know, that's that's the conflict that's happening there. So that, um, uh, not, not exactly thrilled with his response. Maybe it's, Maybe it's um, strategic. Maybe he really believes that. It, it comes into question when you start talking about policy. What policies would you be putting forward? Would you constantly be asking and, and having more money? Would you not put an end to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? You know, those are a lot of questions that I think now he set himself up to have to answer. What would be his solution for Israel-Palestine? What would be his, you know, his version of, you know, when Trump came out with his a uh, big plan, big, uh, you know, the, the big compromise deal, which was not a very good one. What would RFK Jr. put forward in that situation? That, I think those are questions that now he's opened himself up to having to ask. However, that being said, I do want to show this one last tweet. This is from Ben. Uh, his name's just Ben, apparently. It says, RFK Jr. is running on ending the wars and abolishing the CIA. Let me repeat. RFK Jr. is running on ending the wars and abolishing the CIA. I don't care about his positions on guns and climate. Now, of course, he's not talking about Israel in this, but it's the same reasoning. You know, when you decide on supporting a candidate, you have to look at the whole candidate, look at what is your most important issue. And if his stance, like I saw someone on Twitter say, you know, his stance on Roger Waters was my red line. I, okay, you know, I like Roger Waters too, but I wouldn't say Roger Waters is my red line. You know, I've got other things that I find to be more important when it comes to a candidate than than Roger and how you feel about Roger. Uh, so I think I think you know, there's no candidate you're gonna, you're going to like 100 percent unless you're going to run yourself. And I, for me personally, I would say I have to like 85 percent of what they have to say, and I need to like the essence of what their policies are, the essence of what they claim they're going to do. And one thing I like about RFK Jr. is he says, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to get rid of the big money influence, the 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 bought off corporate, you know, the, the corporate interests that have just infiltrated the regulatory bodies. And now we can't have nice things because basically we're living in a corporatocracy and we're running with a rogue state of CIA and rogue surveillance and rogue military industrial complex. So I think you just have to weigh out what you really like and what you don't. But he has opened himself up now to more questions when it comes to Israel and his stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. All right, we're gonna move on with the show. We've got a great one for you. So Field of Greens is our wonderful sponsor for tonight's show. As you know, uh, they are a great product that I have been using for quite some time. It's a wonderful powder that is of of uh, dehydrated fruits and vegetables. They really curate which fruits and vegetables they're putting into this mix to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. You're going to get the best that you can get in here. They're all organic. You just take this fine milled powder, you put it in your ice water or your iced tea, and you drink it. It's, it's very liquidy. It's not thick. It's not like a milkshake. It's more like um, a lemonade. And I personally really love the lemon lime flavor. And you drink that and you get all of your fruits and vegetables into your diet just like that. So simple, so easy, so delicious, actually, with the lemon lime or the regular in iced tea. You can try this out for yourself. Get all of your fruits and vegetables in your diet so simply by visiting fieldofgreens.com. You can use the promo code Kim. Get 15% off your first order. Again, visit fieldofgreens.com. Use that promo code Kim. You're going to get 15% off your first order of any of the products on their website. So go check it out fieldofgreens.com.